So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology. Should you buy an iPad 2018 with Apple Pencil support or should you buy the new Surface Go at $399 and get some of those accessories that go along with it? Well, that's what we're on a mission to find out in this video. Okay, so let's begin by talking about their key specifications. Beginning with the 2018 iPad, quick refresher, this one's a 9.7 inch Retina display that is 1536 by 2048 pixels for a density of 264 PPI. So a pretty sharp display here. It has an eight megapixel camera on the rear that shoots up to 1080p video. No flash on this guy, two gigabytes of RAM and an Apple A10 quad core fusion mobile chip. That's basically what you need to know with the iPad when it comes to its key specifications. Heading over here to the Surface Go, we do have a 10 inch pixel sense display, 217 pixels per inch smaller density than the iPad but it is a bigger display we have a 5 megapixel versus a 1.2 megapixel camera on the front on the rear you do have yourself that 8 megapixel camera and it could shoot 1080 as a 1200 by 1800 resolution for the Surface Go here. You have an Intel Pentium Gold processor. It's a 4415Y, so it's a low power processor, but it should do the job. You have four gigabytes of RAM on the base model, which I have here, and eight gigabytes of RAM on the more premium model, which is gonna run you 150 more, and you also get an SSD for 128 gig on that one. So that's the model you might wanna go with if you want more power, but that takes it out of the budget category, if you ask me. And it has Intel HD Graphics 615, so definitely the lower end of the spectrum when when it comes to those Intel graphics, pretty close to the ones they have on the Surface M3 version, the four gig of RAM version of that tablet. So those are the key specs for the Surface Go and you could see that they have very different offerings because this is more set up for mobile and this is set up more for a desktop environment, which it is. Okay, so let's talk about the design differences and the hardware. So the iPad is definitely the smaller product here. So if you're looking for a smaller machine, a lighter machine to throw in your bag, the iPad is definitely gonna be the way to go. This weighs 1.05 pounds versus the 1.15 pounds on the Surface Go. And with the keyboard, it should still be lighter since it's a lighter tablet without a keyboard. So the iPad, the smaller tablet for sure here. And in terms of its design, it looks classic iPad Air. It looks like the 2017 iPad to be honest and feels rather nice in the hand. So definitely has a nice premium feel here for the iPad. Over here on the Surface Go though, I feel like it feels a little more premium with its design on the rear. Definitely has like some magnesium going on here and nice metals here for the back. The hinges are very sturdy, like very sturdy, just like on the Surface Pro line. You could bring it all the way back. So you can do quite a bit with the flexibility here and those are gonna last quite a long time. I don't think you have any issues with those breaking, anything like that. The buttons over here feel very sturdy as well, but it is a bigger tablet and you could feel that in the hand it has more of a square feel versus the iPad more more of a rounded corner kind of feel. So personally, I think the Surface Go has a more premium build, but I do think that the iPad has a more comfortable size. So just keep that in mind if you are buying these. Uh, with the type cover though, you add quite a bit of weight here to the Surface Go. Also, if you get a you know keyboard or a keyboard attachment case for your iPad 2018, you're gonna add quite a bit of weight there too. So they do have weight penalties when you add accessories. Other than that, they're both similar size though, pretty close you know, in size. Just the Surface Go is slightly heavier and slightly thicker than the iPad 2018. So let's go ahead and talk about the display differences a little bit more in depth. Now the Retina display in my experience seems to feel a little bit higher quality than the display on this guy. Yes, it's higher density and it also seems to me to have a little bit better viewing angles than this guy. This guy presents a little bit more glare than the iPad display and the iPad display just seems better calibrated in my experience. So I think if you're looking for the better display, the retina panel here for the iPad definitely looks a little bit better than this Pixel Sense display. But this Pixel Sense display here is not a bad display whatsoever. It's definitely a nice premium display for this little tablet. It's not Super AMOLED or anything like that. So you don't have deep blacks. You don't have deep blacks here on the retina either. These are both LCDs. So you're not gonna see extremely black blacks on these devices, but you will see very sharp panels when it comes to reading and you will see pretty good colors, just not very vibrant colors. When it comes to display, the best way I could sum it up is that if you're gonna be doing some movie watching, you know, the they're both similar in display. So the Surface Go might be better because it has a bigger display, but for reading, I think the fonts are a little cleaner 
for the iPad. Both of them are gonna offer a great viewing experience in both ways, so that's pretty much an equal comparison here. One thing to note though is that the thicker bezels for this Microsoft Surface Go are very apparent when you watch or read in portrait mode. So you can see just how thick they are here versus the iPad, they're much thinner on this one. So they will become a distraction a little bit if you're using this in portrait mode, but if you're holding it in landscape, you probably are not gonna care too much about this for the Surface Go. So definitely keep that in mind. That it does have thicker bezels here on the display. So which should you buy in terms of software? I mean, this one's an easy one. You just gotta know one you know, question. Do you want a mobile operating system or do you want a desktop operating system? Then get the iPad if you want mobile because this runs the iOS experience. It's like a blown up iPhone. That's really all it is. And if you go ahead and pull up, you can see that you do have the ability to do some better multitasking here. Now you do have a dock, so if you get a keyboard, it kind of feels a little bit like a tiny miniaturized, you know, MacBook Pro kind of experience here for the iPad, but you gotta put your stuff on the dock so you get that similar feel. But mostly you're gonna run the millions of apps that you can get in the app store for this device. It's gonna be smooth, everything's gonna work well, but you might have some limitations when it comes to what those apps can do in comparison to bringing on some, you know, internet-based apps from the Windows uh, ecosystem. So on the Windows side, you're gonna get that tablet mode. So, but this tablet mode definitely doesn't have optimization like the iPad. So if you're buying this for a tablet, don't buy this. You're gonna wanna buy this if you're gonna buy it to use it like a mini laptop because the iPad is the much better tablet here of the two. And uh, when you go into the actual Windows mode, let me get out of these settings here, that's distracting. When you go into the actual mode like this, the desktop environment, here's where the Surface Go starts to shine. You slap that keyboard on this device and it becomes your little mini laptop for class or whatever you're going to do here. So on this device though, if you're trying to download stuff like Photoshop and you know other applications from the internet, it will download them, but I've noticed that the performance hasn't been that great on them. So if you're gonna do that stuff, you definitely wanna opt for the eight gig of RAM version with the 128 gigabyte SSD. But software, yes, you're gonna be able to run full desktop websites, you're gonna be able to run full desktop programs, and you're gonna be able to run Word on here, but you can also run Microsoft Word on here, you can get a subscription for either. So they don't really have that Microsoft you know, suite advantage anymore as they brought it over to the iPad. So that's about it between software. Desktop environment, get the Surface Go. Mobile environment, get the iPad. You gotta decide what is gonna be more useful for you. Maybe if you're a student in class, if you're just somebody buying these for each, if you don't have a laptop, the Surface Go might be the better option here if you want like that tablet experience and that desktop experience. So let's discuss performance between these two. Now, it's not really a fair comparison to discuss performance because of what they run. The iPad runs a mobile CPU with a mobile operating system, iOS, and that's a lot lighter and easier on the CPU. The Surface Go runs a Pentium series processor with you know, four or eight gigs of RAM, which is plenty if you go with the eight gigs of RAM, but I got the four gig of RAM here version. And it just has to run, it just needs more power to run the full desktop operating system. Now, Microsoft does say that they did optimize this, you know, the best they could for this device, but still, you know, it's definitely not as fast as this iPad. I'm not gonna do a speed test here because it's not really a proper speed test when they all run different apps and they run different style of programs. But I can tell you right now, the iPad feels much faster than this in the day to day. This definitely doesn't feel super slow, but once you start doing a few things, more than your just everyday task, you choke this up really quickly here. So I think for light users, productivity, just light productivity, the Surface Go will be just fine. But for those of you who are gonna be doing anything beyond like really light work, you're definitely gonna choke this thing up pretty quickly here for the Surface Go. So um, performance around easily goes to the iPad. But I'm not saying that the Surface Go is not usable. It's definitely very usable, but you just gotta know what you're getting into. You gotta be doing light stuff on this device because if you start doing anything heavy, it'll choke up really quickly. The iPad on the other hand, this is a pretty powerful mobile device. You can do a lot on here with that A10 and you're probably not gonna ever choke the iPad up as all the apps on the App Store, most of them pretty much run the way they should on this side. Okay, so let's quickly discuss audio. We're gonna play the latest video. I'm gonna turn the volume all the way up on both devices, all the way up on the iPad. And over here on the Surface Go, it's all the way up. You can see clearly a difference already. You see how you're gonna watch on full YouTube web browser here versus a mobile browser. So that's a 
difference you can see right there. Let's go ahead and play this. So what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology, and welcome to my Microsoft Surface Go. So pretty loud, but it's a single speaker. So it's pretty loud, but it has stereo speakers at the bottom. So you're not going to cover them up too easy. But you can definitely hear that it's only coming out one side of the iPad, and that's at the bottom here of this iPad. So it's not bad, actually. I think most people will be fine with it. Let's play the Surface Pro or the Surface Go. It has the speakers on the front here of the device. Skip this ad really quickly. I also should mention both do have headphone jacks. Let's quickly play this. I covered the speakers up. So you can see it actually doesn't sound super loud in comparison to the iPad. Let me see if the volume's up on YouTube though. Let me make sure. Okay, that doesn't want to respond too well. Let me go ahead and make sure the volume is up here. Yeah, it was all the way up. So the Surface Go doesn't sound quite as loud as the iPad, but it definitely has those front firing speakers. And again, they both have headphone jack support, so that's a good thing. So here we are at battery life. The iPad has dropped, you know, basically 0% throughout this video. The Surface Go has dropped 10%. Now you do have better battery modes and best performance modes here for the Surface Go. Seeing as this tablet is not that powerful, you're gonna wanna put it in best performance mode here for the Surface Go. Running in better battery life is just gonna slow you down even more, unless you're just watching a movie or something like that for the Surface Go. So in the real world, the Surface Go, I've been getting around six hours of usage, not the nine hours that's claimed. The iPad though, definitely gets the 10 hours that's claimed pretty easy, and sometimes it actually goes over that 10 hours. So if you're looking for better battery life, hands down, the iPad. Neither one of them have fans, so they don't get loud when you are pushing these batteries, but basically, this one is gonna be the way to go when it comes to battery life. The Surface Go is good battery life. It's not bad, but it doesn't touch the iPad 2018 in that department. Okay, so I don't wanna discuss the cameras too much, but I do wanna mention them just for a tad second. The iPad definitely gives you a bigger viewfinder, and it's more like that mobile, you know, iPhone kind of experience. It's like an iPhone 6S camera in this one, not the latest and greatest, but you're gonna be able to take some quick snaps here no problem for the iPad. Let's go ahead and just fire off a quick photo and boom, and you could take that photo. And that's a megapixel, pretty nice photo quality overall for this device. And it's gonna be a pretty decent FaceTime camera, 1.2 megapixels. I did do some Skype chatting on the Surface Go and I did experience a pretty good you know, feedback. The person said I, saw, I looked very clear on both when I flipped the camera around and from the front. So Skyping is gonna be just fine for this device. Let's go ahead and flip that around. And let's type in camera or find the camera here. See, this is the thing about Windows. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to find things depending, you know, who you talk to. But for me, I feel like I got to dig around a little bit more sometimes just to find some things. Let's take camera. And there you go. There's your camera. Let's go ahead and flip it around. And you could see, let's take that photo. Let's take a look at it. You could see quality. Not as good as the iPad, but still not bad for a tablet. It's definitely going to work for some documents, a quick snap if you absolutely need to use it for a photo. Neither have flash, and I don't think neither people are going to be using videos too much to take videos on this, but they will work in a pinch. If there's an emergency situation, you need to record that situation, or you need to you know, scan a quick document, take a quick photo. They will work for that, and Skyping and FaceTiming will be fine on both of them, but there's not too much more else to discuss when it comes to their cameras. Neither person, I think, is buying these just for their cameras. So quickly discussing their storage, 32 gigabytes or 128 for the iPad over here 2018. You are gonna pay 329 for 32, 429 for 128. You get 128 for 550. So the iPad cut in the Surface Go by quite a bit when it comes to the price point. And 399 for the 64 gigabyte version of 
this Surface Go. But that storage, I think, is going to be a little bit slower on the Surface Go when you are doing just transferring files. And most of the time, if you got an iPhone, you could just airdrop your files from your iPad. Okay, so we've arrived at the final conclusion. You should buy the iPad if you're looking for a more of a fast experience, better battery life, and a little bit more compact than the Surface Go and cheaper. Um, and also you don't mind using mobile applications for some light productivity work. And also you do have the Microsoft Suite mobile that comes to the iPad now. So you don't really have that advantage to say, well, you can't do Word and PowerPoint and all that. Yes, you can do that on an iPad. iOS 12 is gonna make this device even better. So you should buy the Surface Go if you're looking for the cheapest alternative to a Surface Pro. I don't think you should really buy this if you're looking at a competitor to the iPad because this, this device just doesn't get as good a battery life as the iPad. It's definitely more sluggish in the performance and the display to me is not quite as nice either. Thicker bezels, design is a little heavier, but you do have the hinge factor which you don't get on the iPad, which definitely allows you for not having awkward moments in bed when you are using this device and you just wanna prop it up on bed or on a table or something. The hinge is a huge design element that gives gives a pro to the Surface Go. But if you are looking for you know a laptop style experience, which you, you want a budget style laptop and uh, you are already in that $300, $400 price range and you get you know some accessories with this, you boost this price up to over 600. Actually, my total combination with all the accessories in the Surface Go base model was 722 bucks. So it gets up there with the accessories. But like I say, if you want that desktop environment with a few tablet style centric features, the Surface Go is gonna be a great budget laptop for light productivity work. But don't expect rock solid performance on here. You'll get a better performer for the iPad. Anyway, that's it. If you found this video helpful, enjoyable, entertaining, informing, do me a favor, click that like button for me. Which one are you going with? Have you already decided? Let us know down below. If you have either one of these tablets, please consider sharing your experience with the community. It helps people out who are looking to buy one of these. You don't know how much it helps. And uh, Nick here up in you to master your technology. Be sure to be well. I will catch you all in the next episode and peace.